Hey fellow heroes, I've just come across a amazingly strong incinerator snap build that's very viable for the endgame content and can make yours and everyone else's lives a lot easier once it's triggered. I've covered Fellwinds Hell many, many times before, as its requirements are easy to use and the deeper effects it gives can slow down the most chaotic environments. So in this video, I'm going to cover the exotic again, but also show you why this may be the best version of the subclass type, as you can get a Radiant buff, times 2 restoration, damage buffs on top of what we have, and instant mini regen just to top things off. It's incredible what you can do with exotic and Zero 3.0 together, as one snap can end it all in seconds. But you know what else won't end it all in seconds? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notifications, as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using Dawnblade as it works best with the aggressive playstyle the build offers. Just like the rest of the mini solo builds we've done, it's going to follow in the same footsteps as them, so I'll keep it short. The main difference this time is that our melee will be able to debuff and stun combatants for a few seconds, that in certain difficulties, can make encounters a lot more easier to breeze through. On top of that, we can add on other groups of buffs to the setup so we can easily make use of the debuff applied. Before that though, we need to know what we are packing. So, for aspects, I have Touch of Flame that allows our grenades to have an added effect to them, and Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide and will grant me energy back while in the air. For Fragments, you want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more scorch to targets, Ember of Torches where power melee hits against combatants make you and allies radiant, Ember of Searing where scorch targets grant me energy back, and Ember of Solace where radiant and restoration effects are increased in duration. For stats, you want 80 in discipline, roughly, and 50 to 60 in strength. As shown, the build will heavily rely on the strength stat to get the most out of it, and because of how I've made this setup work, you don't need to have a high stat to pull this off, which is great if you like to use other weapons and gear. For key mods, we have Seeking Worlds for allowing Elemental Worlds created to follow you, Powerful Wealth for plus 2 worlds created, Phantom Might for a 25% solo weapon buff, Mini Wall Maker for creating worlds via melee, and Well of Life for an increased health regen over time. At first, it looks bare bones to how it works. You get your melee, which will debuff combatants and spread Scorch damage to them, but this is what makes the build actually nutty. When applying Scorch, we'll be adding on more than normal thanks to the Ember of Ashes, and if we play our cards right, we can cause an ignition to occur if we use our melee again. Now, applying on the facts that we can become Radiant, get times 2 Restoration via Well of Life and Phoenix Dive, get a 56% damage increasement via solar weapons, and cause targets to have a 30% debuff, which can last up to 20 seconds depending on the targets affected, you can probably see why this build is more than meets the eye. So from here, you'll then want to invest into weaponry, which I only have two preference to recommend for everyone. To start, we had the Riptide Fusion Rifle with Auto Loading and Chill Clip, and I've mentioned this many times before, but you need to get this weapon and have it as a spare, as it can destroy minor to ultra combatants in a small time frame. Chill Clip is really big with stunning things and causing extra damage to occur on targets, so if you want to run Gambit, for example, as fast as possible, and you don't want to deal with the tough combatants that appear near the bank at times, then this weapon with the perk is the best choice to go with. If not, then you can always try and get the Trials or Rage Fusion that also drops with the following perk. Next is Skyburner's Oath, which I mentioned before in the last video. The weapon is capable of causing Scorch onto targets with ease, which means it will work with Ember Searing and grant you melee energy back. This in short means you can have a non-stop charge melee whenever you like, as long as you get a kill with said weapon while they are Scorched. This also means we can cause the target to ignite multiple times if we can get our melee back quickly, so any mods or perk that increases the ignite sizes and damage will be very much welcomed here. For a heavy health Kojuelo with auto loading and last impression, for a max damage solo weapon to use on mini bosses to bosses alike. Straightforward and very powerful rocket launcher to use, although any weapon here is fine to pick, including a weapon with explosive lights. If you want to make use of the 56% damage increase though, then the Chain of Command Heavy Machine Gun is also a great pick as it can roll with Osmosis and Demolitionist for a very nice easy source of grenades and consistent damage over a short period. For the stats, I'm going to be very honest with you here and say that there isn't a specific thing here except for the strength stats that you need to heavily invest in. Although strength should be highly focused in to make our media appear more often, we have Ember Searing and Sky Burners who will both be contributing to us getting our media back straight away. Keeping this area to 50 to 60 is enough and you don't need to go any more from there. You can add in Invigoration and Absolution etc to the mix if you have space to do so, 
but only do so if you decide not to use Skyburns at all. Although we have our discipline at 80, I highly recommend you go ahead and reduce this down to at least 50 to 60 and then pump the rest of the points into resilience as that will give you a damage reduction which will be helpful for most of the endgame content you'll be playing in. Left over wise we have Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via magic elemental weapons used. Better already for allowing us to regen our health straight away the moment we collect a orb of power. Flame Harvesting where you can create elemental worlds via solar exotic weapons and Solar Formation where your ignitions do increased damage and increased radius. Now as we have this bit covered, here are the mods all compiled into the list for quicker viewing. For Head we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon x2 and Seeking Worlds mod. Arm we have Discipline and Battle for World mod. Chest we have Resilience, Arm of the Dying Sun, Cocus of Dampner and Fault of Might mod. Leg we have Mind of Resilience, Linear Fusion Scavenger mod. Better Already, a Melee Wallmaker mod. Bond we have Solar Formation, Flame Harvesting and World of Life mod. If you have watched my last video then this should seem familiar to you as it has all the key parts that makes it so. Now the power of the build relies on the user getting charge mini kills which if connected will wipe out those infected by it or stun and weaken those who survive. This can be very powerful in certain environments where you have to face a wave of different combatants coming at you. If we take Gambit for example, in that mode you'll be up against a wide group of combatants that you can easily pull off the charge mini attack and make ad clearing even more easier for the team. If you manage to do a finish up or melee on the taken ants that appear when the boss does, then you can apply some extra damage and a 30% debuff for even faster damage time frame on said boss. Now another example is Nightfall such as Master and Legend Tears in the game. A simple melee can make certain counters a breeze if you put it off at the right moment and the right time. And remember, the bigger the combatant, the longer the effects will last such as doing it on the anti-champion and getting a sweet 20 second debuff timer. It's very straightforward but fascinating when pulled off in large groups as from that point no one can fight back and if they do then it won't do much as they are weak and beyond relief. And I can see this build making its way into raids as well if you're on ad duty as it can help with slowing the ongoing rush of enemies and make individual tasks a lot easier to do. However, you do need to be aware of the build when using your melee or finish on combatants as not everything will always go as planned. Now depending on the combatant you face, if you try to use this on a ultra combatant, you won't be able to one shot them via your melee or finisher alone because of how the build relies on combatants being weak for it to work. This can be easily achieved at times but at the same time you have to be careful as it's not always worth activating your midi in a crowded area or up against a boss that has more health than needed. You also can't use this midi alone against bosses and expect to activate the exotic name as that's not how it works. Now you might be able to cause an ignition to activate but that will be it so don't expect a constant 30% debuff all the time. When using the build, its strength lies more in add duty as that's the way it can spread its effects large and wide. In a clustered area, having this build in hand can simplify the use of weapons and it's handy when showing new players around certain activities. But at the same time, its use against bosses is quite weak as it heavily relies on if you get enough combatant near them to activate it. As such, don't expect this to be a monster for DPS against bosses, but rather a monster that provides benefits if everything goes as planned. And if you enjoy this type of build, then you'll probably love the rest of the other builds I have as well. So if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.